Three months ago, I set up some wildlife cameras around the croft where we live in the Highlands. There's so much going on around here and I wanted to learn more about the animals around us and their natural behaviours, the things they do when we're not around to watch them. To get the best shots possible, I spent some time choosing the best places I can put the wildlife cams and that's where I've seen the animals before. We have a fairly large badger set just behind the beehives, which we've noticed growing over the last couple of years. So I've put a couple of cameras here to see what's going on and check the numbers of them. Down at the bottom of the croft, there's a burn and there's a couple of deer trails that seem to converge at the same point at the burn, which is making me think this is where they come to drink water. And it's a narrow point, so it's probably where they're crossing over the burn as well. So I'm gonna put a camera here and see if we catch any deer. I call this Ollie's Wood. It's not really Ollie's Wood, but every time we go for a walk, he comes in here from the track and has a race around the wood before he comes back out again. Now, the reason I've put a camera in here is because every time Ollie comes in, he always picks up the scent of an animal that's probably been in here the night before. So if Ollie's picking up a scent of an animal, I just figured it'd be a good place to put a camera and see what is in here. Finally, I've installed one here at the apiary. I've seen deer wandering about here before, so I thought it'd be interesting to see if I can get any close enough to the camera and to see if they actually try and do anything with the hives and how the bees react. The first thing I noticed was that even though I'd camouflaged the cameras, they were drawing curiosity from the animals. For the first couple of weeks, I was just wiping various animal snot off the lens as they all had a good sniff to see what this new thing was that was sticking out of the ground. It wasn't long till that curiosity wore off and they carried on doing their own thing. Well, all except the pheasant. I think he's developed a bit of a crush on the camera. This is a common pheasant cock. He's not really native to the UK, but he's not truly wild either. It's said that they were brought in by the Romans or even as early as the Normans as ornamental birds. And you can see why. I mean, if you gave me some crayons and asked me to design a really colorful bird, this is probably what I'd draw. With his burnt orange body feathers, the green and blue, almost pearlescent neck, and those vibrant red cheeks and long tail, this is definitely one attractive cock. One thing that's really obvious is just how protective he is of his hens and his territory. He's constantly letting everybody know by letting out this distinctive crow and flapping his meter wide wings to make him look big and strong. When I say constantly crowing, I mean constantly. Not long before I set the cameras up, the local cocks were in competition for territory and hens. I could open the door on a morning and there'd be a cock fight going on in the garden. I could stand there for 15 or 20 minutes just watching these two cocks battling it out before one would fly away. The winning cock wins the territory and he can claim half a dozen hens or more. This one's only got two, but if you've got a smaller cock, you might not be able to breed at all. Oh well, maybe next year. You'd be surprised just how sensitive a cock can be to vibrations too. It's said that cocks can pick up early signs of an earthquake and they start to crow like mad before anybody else has even noticed it. Clever cock. When I got my first two colonies of bees back in 2022, when I was placing them on the pallets just over there, I noticed the entrance to a badger set just behind them. I was really fascinated because I'd never seen a badger set before. I don't think I'd ever seen a badger in the wild before. 
So I put a wildlife camera out two years ago and I was really lucky to capture a lot of footage, even two young cubs when they were born. Now the set's expanded even just over the last two years. This whole bank behind me is full of tunnels that go into and underneath the bank, probably for hundreds of metres. And I know for a fact that the family's expanded while we've lived here. Now the Badgers have probably been here for many years before we moved in and even the previous owners. And it's been really fascinating over the last few months watching how the Badgers behave. Badgers are nocturnal and that means they only come out at night. So virtually all the footage I've got was filmed during darkness. It's also worth mentioning that my wildlife cameras, like most, use infrared light when it's dark, which a lot of animals can't see, but it does mean that it records in black and white. So I've had to spend a few days colorizing this footage just to give you a better idea of how it actually looks. Nocturnal animals have got the ability to avoid being seen by other animals, particularly ones that don't see well in the dark, and that gives the badgers an advantage. Plus, adult badgers really don't have much in the way of predators, but they're still a lot safer by coming out at night. I say safer, when I first installed these cameras, they were a little bit nervous at first, but it didn't take them long to venture out from the set and have a good sniff around the cameras. If I said the words anal glands, you'd probably think of some foul smelling bumhole and it'll put you right off your beef struggling off. Well, listen, before you switch off in disgust, you've got to see this first. Badgers have got two sets of anal glands. One pair, to be fair, does give off a pretty grim odour, but they also have this second pair and they give off a much sweeter smell. And each clan has got its own odour and they use it to reinforce the social bonds of the clan. When they leave the set, they'll play and cuddle before doing this thing called anal rubbing. Now, it's real, you can Google it, and it's literally rubbing their anal glands on each other to transfer that scent. And badgers from the same family can identify each other just from this distinct smell. I dare you to try that the next time your auntie Pat comes over for Sunday lunch. What's better after a good anal rubbing session than to find a quiet spot to chill in the moonlight, pick at your feet and have a good scratch? When we first showed the badgers on our land, we got a few messages from viewers who were worried that they'd kill our chickens. But honestly, we've had the chickens for well over two years now, and the badgers never even bother with them. To be honest, the badgers prefer a different diet altogether. More than half of what they eat is just earthworms. They love digging for them, and we see the little holes all over the land. They do also take small rodents and things like fruit and bulbs too. But there's an unlimited supply of earthworms and all the other foods they prefer, so we're not worried about the hen. I was surprised just how clean the badgers like to keep their set. They always come outside to go to the toilet, they'll dig a hole, do the business, and then just bury it. And every few days they change the bedding in the set. They'll drag out the old dirty grass and hay and replace it by taking in fresh. It's a bit embarrassing really, knowing that badgers change the bedding more often than I do. My favourite wild animals of all in Scotland are the deer. And around the croft, we have two types of deer that visit us. The red deer, which are the largest species of deer in Highland Scotland, and also roe deer, which are a lot smaller and I think cuter and a little bit more shy too. There are a lot of red deer up here in the Highlands. Some people might say too many. That's a bit controversial for me, I think. 
I never get bored of seeing them. Many a time I can come downstairs on a morning and look out the kitchen window and there's a herd of them <laughs> right outside the house munching on the fresh green grass. This burn just to my right hand side is really popular with the deer which is why I decided to put a couple of wildlife cameras here to see if I could catch them and their natural behaviours. Of all the wildlife cameras I've placed around the croft, this was the one that I had the best hopes for. But after checking it every single week for about four or five weeks, it didn't catch a thing. I was a bit disappointed and I told myself that if it didn't catch anything by the following week, I'd move it. But then... This herd of red deer have been around the croft for a few weeks already, but finally decided to check out the camera by the burn. There's six hinds in this group, and they were all enjoying a drink and some of that fresh spring grass. Just across from the burn, the stag from this same group was mooching around the apiary, munching on the grass and the young tree shoots, before getting a little bit too close to one of the beehives, where one of the worker bees had to remind him who lives there. As if I wasn't lucky enough to capture the red deer, a roe deer came to the same place the very next day. These tend to be a lot more solitary, and I usually see these in twos or threes. They're a lot smaller than the red deer too. The roe's usually about 15 to 20 kilos and stand in less than a metre tall. Compared with the red deer, they're about two metres tall and can weigh 10 times as much. Roe deer are also more active after dusk and just before dawn, so the cameras picked them up much more during the dark hours. I think the weather's teasing us. It's cruel. The sun's shining, but it's still spitting. Tease. <laughs> what have you learned about today's vlog then? It's like that weren't in it. <laughs> no, about the content of it. That I weren't in it. The thing I want <laughs> viewers to take is just how much you can learn about cocks by watching hidden cameras. I think that's that's the take from today's vlog, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, anyway. What? The thing I've taken from this is just how brilliant it is and how close you can get to the wild animals without hurting them or stressing them, literally with the deer eyeball to eyeball. Yes. And it's better than going to a zoo, isn't it? I think as well, it's not oh, as cruel. Yes. Is there any animals you didn't see that you thought you might have done? Yes. What? A pine martin. Yeah, that was what I was going to say. Down at the burn, we've actually seen pine martins before. Yeah. And I was really hoping that we'd catch one on camera, but we haven't. They're very elusive. In like three months, but I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep the cameras where they are and we're going to keep them rolling all through the summer and into the autumn. So we might have enough footage to do another one. Hopefully with different animals. I'd like to see a zebra. Yes, I would. Yes. That or would, a giraffe. That would be a shocker, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, I'd like to see a pine martin and I'd also like to see a wild cat. Although I don't think we're going to just see that. Yeah, I don't think we'll see that. There's none round here. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed this. I've loved making it. It's been three months in the making. It's taken me about two weeks to edit it, colorizing all that black and white nighttime. Yes. <laughs> that took days. It did actually. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed it. If you're not already, please subscribe to the channel and give the video a like. If you hit the notification bell, YouTube will let you know every time we release a new video. And if you'd like to help support the channel, it's getting a bit breezy now, isn't it? It's getting windy now. If you'd like to help support the channel, uh, join us on Patreon where you'll get all sorts of exclusive content. There's tons of rubbish on there. Early access to some of the vlogs. Uh, and I'm going to do a video shortly about some of the tips and tricks about shooting uh, wildlife photography using wild cameras. Mm. There you go, that's coming soon. Ooh, nice. Uh, is that it? I haven't been in it much, have I? Well, have you? We thought, we thought we'd just drag him in just to prove he's, he's not left me and run off with somebody else. Uh, join us for the live this weekend or on replay if you're watching later in the week after. Yes. And we'll see you next time. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Ta-ra! -bye.